to program one plugged in cables and set switches. In the foreground, Betty Jennings is programming the master programmer, which combined the subroutines set up on the local units into a single master routine. In the public demonstration of the ENIAC, we computed the trajectory of a shell that took 30 seconds to reach its target. A young woman with a mechanical desk calculator spent one or two days calculating such a trajectory. The ENIAC computed the trajectory in only 20 seconds, faster than the shell itself traveled. This convinced the colonels and generals present that electronic computers were important. I come from a long line of school teachers and farmers, and I was born in Gentry County, Missouri, uh, about two miles outside a little town called Alanthus Grove. I love college. I mean, I went when I was 16, and the first time I'd ever been away from home, and I absolutely loved it. I was uh, finished with my coursework in January of 1945. So my calculus teacher, I had said to my calculus teacher, I don't want to teach school, what a, but I can't think of anything else to do. And she said, oh, there are lots of things you can do. So she began to bring me uh, recruitment letters. So she brought me from one, one from IBM for system service girls, and she brought me one from Aberdeen Proving Ground for computers. I applied and uh, I didn't hear from them. Finally, when it came, it said that I was hired in Tacoma as soon as possible. Yeah, I was on the Wabash out of Stanbury the next night. I was just sitting there calculating these trajectories to go into firing table for guns and uh, each uh, firing table had about a thousand trajectories, a thousand to twelve hundred, and uh, it took about forty hours, thirty to forty hours, to do one by hand. So yeah. they had a lot of them to do. This announcement came around that they were looking for operators and of a uh, new machine they were building called the ENIAC. So of course I had no idea what it was. But uh, I knew it wasn't doing hand calculations. <laughs> so I figured that if I could start on the ground floor with other people, then I'd have a chance to get ahead. So I applied. You know, I don't think they ever really thought that we would be programmers. I think the, the original view of it was that anybody that had a problem to put on the ENIAC that uh, they would program it themselves and then just give it to us and we would plug up the machine and run it. They were going to have a public announcement of the ENIAC. Goldstein invited Betty and me out to his uh, and his wife, Adele was there, to his apartment and he asked us if the ENIAC, if the trajectory was ready to go and if they could use it as a demonstration for the announcement on the 15th. Well, Betty and I were pretty sure it was perfect. So we said, you bet. <laughs> when they ran the trajectory uh, for, the, uh, for the demonstration, the um, uh, trajectory that they ran took 30 seconds for the shell to trace it, but the ENIAC did the calculations in 20 seconds. The people that were sitting there could see the numbers build up as the, as the shell reached the altitude and then came down and hit the ground. So that was pretty impressive. We went out to the tabulator and printed them up and handed them out as souvenirs for people. Yeah, we ran it several times, you know, to show people, you know, exactly what was going on. Uh, so, I mean, they were absolutely ecstatic. Well, they went out to, for dinner with all the people, but guess what? Not the Antioch women. Betty and I weren't invited. So, <laughs> we were sort of horrified. Then after years, I mean, nobody paid any attention to the Antioch women until 1986. Uh, Catherine Kleiman 
who um, was graduating from Harvard with a degree in social science and uh, she had chosen as her senior paper the women in the computer business. Tom Petzanger, who wrote, wrote the upfront column in the Wall Street Journal on Fridays, heard about us. He wrote two columns in the Wall Street Journal. Then everybody was interested in us. I think you should do what you love. It's, it's not that much work when you do what you like to do. But when you're doing what you don't like to do, it's really drudgery. So I believe that you really should, should move on if you don't enjoy doing it because life's too short not to enjoy what you're doing. The other one, of course, is luck beats brains. <laughs> <laughs>